this is really our Moy story, not mine at all. But it's better that I should tell it, because she's such a shy girl, you can hardly get two words from her about it. I'd been running a clinic in her village for quite a while before the day she first came, rather timidly, to see me. Her brother was ill, and she wanted me to have a look at him. She told me that her granny was very clever at brewing Chinese remedies, and that they usually worked well. But this time, our Moy had a feeling that her brother's fever needed something stronger, like our new drugs that had already been so successful in the village. But it all went wrong. Granny was angry because our Moy had kept her waiting. And I could see that it wasn't a good moment to interfere. The room was very stuffy, and it looked to me as though the boy had a high fever. But I would have spoiled everything by butting in then. I had to wait until they really wanted me. It wasn't long, on the same evening, in fact. The boy was rapidly getting worse, and so the family had agreed to send for me, although Granny continued to give him her own medicines. I didn't have to wait long to hear that he was much better. Amoy came up to tell me, and I could see at once that she was more than just grateful for her brother's recovery. From that moment, 
She was interested in the work of the clinic. And that very first day she made herself useful by interpreting for an old man whose dialect I couldn't follow. very busy and there was little time to talk to Amoy but she used to come often just to watch me at work and gradually she began to help me. I could see straight away that she had a talent for nursing and she was so keen that she even came to all my lectures too. It was about this time that the Red Cross started a scheme for training assistant nurses to help us. And there was no doubt at all about what our Moy's reply would be when I offered her the chance. She was a born nurse. First, she was to get her basic training with me until the word came that the general hospital was ready to receive her. It was a two years course, and though I was delighted to see our Moy go off so happily, and her family reconciled to her going, I wondered how on earth I was going to manage without her for so long. Mine wasn't the only clinic in Malaya, not by a long way. There were 34 at one time, but gradually they're being handed over to local organizations as they become trained to take over from us. We came in as emergency teams and got going all over the country, particularly among the rural people. When half a million squatters were brought together into new villages like our Moy's, it was too big a task for the government medical services to cope with all at once. So the British Red Cross was appealed to for help. We worked in every state and settlement in the Federation and among the people of all its races. In Malay Kampongs and among the Aborigines, the people of the jungle. We organized junior Red Cross classes in many of the schools. We visited rubber estates and we held clinics by the side of the road. to remote places too that were only accessible by river.
at last the day came for our Moy to come home. The village gave her a great reception, and she deserved it. I was so proud of her. She'd grown greatly in confidence and poise. We had the usual crowd waiting in the clinic, and our Moy wasted no time in getting her uniform on and settling down to work. I knew that soon the day would come when our job would be done when we could hand over all the clinics to the women of Malaya, and that they would faithfully carry on the work of healing among their own people. Just as our Moy had learned to do, with such patience and understanding.